I can't hear you. That's because I haven't started talking yet. Oh. <laughs> Can you see me? The diva has arrived, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you silly. What's up? What's going on, my friend? It has been a minute and two centuries. Um, are you getting some type of echo? Hold on, let's try some here. Oh no, I'm not getting an echo. I'm just making sure you aren't because I'm using my Bluetooth in my car. There we go. No, I'm not getting any type of feedback. Okay, good. What's up? How you doing? Girl, I'm running like a headless chicken during a slave sale. I'm telling you, I'm just trying to keep it all together up in here, man, between work and school. As you can tell, the backdrop. What are, you, what, are you, what are you still doing in school? Um, I'm going for my cloud computing bachelor's, okay, unlike some of us, unlike some of us, I'm actually trying to improve myself, uh, you know, some of us aren't I'm perfect, just saying. some of us like, aren't like, perfect, like, how old you gotta be to get tired of going, like, I'm tired of school already. That's because your brain's already big, you just stuffed it in a small head of yours, so, you know, me, I'm always going to expand, I'm always growing, you know. But enough about me. How are you doing? Oh, I'm okay. I'm about to go to City Hall. They are doing like this um, movie premiere, and I was invited. And so I'm oh. on my way there. And I live far from Atlanta, so um, right now I'm about 40 minutes out. So I'm driving, you know, there. Oh, Miss Highfalutin <laughs> over here. Okay, invited to <laughs> movie premieres and. Oh, got the hair down past the shoulders. Some of us are a little bit more on the challenge side, you know. We can't do nothing about that. <laughs> it was, it was the guy. Um, you know, invited me. I was like, okay. You know what? I mean, did you see Wonder Woman? Please tell me yes. Please tell me yes. No, I was supposed to see it on my birthday, but then something happened. Then we were supposed to see it on Monday, and then something happened. So we've been trying to do it before on a weekday because you, I don't know if you know, but Groupon.com, they have like these discount tickets for this movie theater called Studio Movie Grill. And he's never been, and I've been wanting to take him. And Studio Movie Grill is like um, where they bring you the food in the movie theater. You know what I'm mm -hmm. talking about? Yeah, we got those here, like uh, Cinema Cafe and the, the Paragon and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, but on Groupon.com, they have discount tickets. So he bought some tickets, and I kept saying, well, we'll go see Wonder Woman on the weekday because you can't do it on the uh, weekends, it's only on the weekday. But I've been wanting to see it, you know. I was surprised. You know, remember that woman uh, in that Chris Rock movie uh, where he was married to the woman and Carrie Washington was in the movie? You remember yeah. that movie? Remember yeah. his wife? I thought that his wife, the actress that played his wife, I thought she was going to be Wonder Woman. What? Yeah, like a long time ago when they first said they were going to make the Wonder Woman movie, they were saying she was going to be it. Oh, no. Yeah. Mm -mm. No, initially, I'm telling you, like a long time ago, this had to have been like four years ago when they first started talking about this Wonder Woman thing, they chose her. And I don't know why. <laughs> Because that's the first time I heard about it. It was an article, and it was saying that they were choosing her. And so, well, the woman that they have now is a good fit. I don't see her being a bad fit. Gal, like Gal Gadot is killing it. I, I, I've I, seen when she popped up in Batman versus Superman, and her performance alone let me know, yeah, she's, she is going to continue the tradition. Now, what I like for them to do is to do Anubia, you know, the black Wonder Woman. That will be pretty big. Mm -hmm. Who would be that? Who? I That's a good that question. Would. I think they may have had that actress cast already, but I don't know who it's going to be. Um, I know she better represent her or she'll get fired. I'm telling you right now, I will fire her. She went to worry about no one else <laughs> being split by my own, okay? What that about the girl that played uh, Lil' Kim in Notorious? Uh, no. <laughs> Uh, Miscellaneous? That's the way I see her. That's her name to me. Miscellaneous. <laughs> why, why miscellaneous? What's wrong with you? I 
think she's a great actress. Yeah, you saw it? How was it? The movie. Oh, the movie was amazing. I mean, the fight scenes were on point. Um, the interactive scenes where you were learning about everything from being on Themyscira and, you know, her, about her mom, Hippolyta, and about how she wanted to be a warrior, which was actually on point. It got the campy parts, which added the humor. Now, some people I talked to didn't really agree with it. I said, you know what? You can't make a movie too serious, and you can't make it too goofy. It's got to have that balance. And to me, it had the balance. Because, yo, I'm telling you, those fight scenes, especially when, oh, my gosh, I don't want to give it away because you're one of my closest friends, and you taught me a lot, and I feel like if I do this, I'm going to give it away. So I, I don't know. Yeah, don't tell me. Don't tell me because I want to. I want to see it so bad, and it came out on my birthday, and I wish I could have seen it on my birthday. That would have been nice. Let me tell you but something. I spend eleven dollars on popcorn and stuff at the movie. You know, a movie is good when you, I spill my popcorn, and I don't even care. I'm just like, just, just keep, <laughs> just, just, ah, just keep. I'll go buy some more. I don't care. Just eleven dollars at the movie theater. That's cheap. Movies, movies. You go to movies, you spend fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> when you can, like, I don't know why they charge so much. Well, when you can fandango a movie ticket for five dollars, I ain't got no complaints, and the concessions are even oh. cheaper. Fandango. I never thought to use fandango. Are you serious? Uh, yeah. I never thought to do that. That's a I have, idea. I have skirted so many movie lines. Like, how you doing? Good to see you. You should wear that <laughs> color. Have a good one. He's fat. You're short. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> you silly. You scan my phone. Boop. Thank you very much. Thank you. Enjoy your minimum wage job. And I just. <laughs> Did you um go by yourself? Yes, I went on a solo movie date because I haven't had that in quite a while. And wow. I mean, granted, granted, my girl wanted to go, but you know, something like this, she said she wants to go see it, so we'll probably go see it this weekend. Um, How my, did you go, go see it without her? It's called Wonder Woman. Okay. That means bring your woman. I will bring my woman, but I told you, I tell you one thing about this movie. I'm gonna see it again. I'm gonna act like I ain't never seen it. I'm gonna jump by my seat. I'm gonna waste another eleven dollars on popcorn and stuff all over again. I'm telling you, it's, history gonna repeat itself. I'm telling you. But you, it is a crime if you do not see this movie. It is a crime. K R I M E crime. I'm telling you. I even yeah, misspelled the word. I'm gonna try to see it, but like I can't see it now because Friday you're driving. weekend. Yeah, cause you drive. No, I mean the weekend. I can't. I, I gotta wait till Monday all over again to see it so I can use the Groupon. Oh my gosh, you <laughs> Groupon girl. I know you the queen of discounts, but God bless America. Come on. I'm now. saying I'm, I'm frugal. Listen, I didn't get. Listen, I'm frugal. <laughs> as much money as I like, I I always tell people all the time that YouTube has like uh, sliced dollars and a half when they demonetize everything so lately on my channel i've been asking for donations and everybody acting like they cheapskate what's going on but i guess a lot of people just feel like youtube is supposed to be free you know because it's been free for so long but as a youtube creator i just feel like i should be asking for donations if youtube is not providing me with enough money i mean and white creators their uh audience is always Donate. Do you ask people for donations, or you don't? You're not in that position yet. I'm not in that position yet. I'm just trying to get my 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 subscribers up and stuff, and I'm still doing the research and asking other YouTubers. And the funny thing about that is, I'm making friends with a lot of other YouTubers. But when I go to BlurredCon at the end of this month, a lot of them are going to be there. So I am going to jump into that uh that mind bank, and I'm going to dig deep. Okay. Pretty brown and nerdy. Talk to me. What we got here? Okay. Markiplier, what we got? Talk to me. I'm just going to just, I'm going to gather everything and I'm going to compare notes and I'm going to ask you because I ask you and then I ask them and I figure out what I need to do to maybe boost my, my viewers. Now, granted, the people... Well, here's, here's my thing. Here's, here's how to boost your viewers. Subscribers, let me tell you something about subscribers. Subscribers are the type of people who are always going to watch your videos but they are the last people that's going to click on an advertisement. The first person that's going to click on an advertisement is a person that's look, on YouTube looking for something. 
So if you do a, I don't know, a video about your new iPhone or your new Samsung, and you start talking about the features and stuff on there, you're liable to make more money off of that video than you would if you made just some regular video for your subscribers. That's why I ask my subscribers for donations instead because your subscribers are the ones that, ones that skip the ads. When you make a video about something like a Samsung or an iPhone, usually the advertisements are about that Samsung or that iPhone. So nine times out of ten, the person that's looking at it is actually going to watch it or click on the link in, in regards to the advertisement. And even in my um, description box, I tell people, do me a favor, click on my ads. Like, if you're going to watch my videos, watch the ads. <laughs> like, don't skip. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, that's, but that's why I really wasn't too big on getting subscribers initially because it was like what difference does it make they're not going to um click on the ads they want to see you so they're going to skip it true so you gotta you gotta try to um bring in people who aren't really a subscriber and, and try to teach them something you know why you people you get on youtube it's for entertainment or to find out how to do something true Especially the entertainment part, and I, I definitely try to provide that. I actually did a uh, my anime a boxing a unboxing of my, one of my first loot animes, and everybody I talked to says, "Oh man, that was great!" and everything. I said, "Okay, so what do you think I should do to get it better?" And they can't. They looked at me and just gave me the universal salute. Just, mm -hmm. just keep doing exactly. what you're doing. <laughs> no, it's it's keep doing like if you're doing unboxing, if that's gonna be your thing. Like, you have to have a thing that you always do that everybody always knows that they can come to your channel and get that. So if unboxing things that have to do with anime is going to be your shit, that needs to just be your shit. You know? Like, right. and that's what your channel is all about. Hmm. You speak... Because you can't... You can't see... I move around a lot. That's a lot of other YouTubers tell me, you know, mm. the reason why I don't have more subscribers or I don't have more views than I'm supposed to because I have a lot of subscribers. I have, what, almost 20,000 subscribers, right? They tell me I sh I'm supposed to have more hits for my videos. Well, it's because I bounce around with what I'm talking about. Sometimes I'm talking about metaphysics. Sometimes I'm talking about news. Sometimes I'm talking about relationships. Sometimes I'm talking about, you know, sex. Sometimes, you know, it, I never stick to one topic. It's the, the best thing you can do is stick to one topic. Oh, okay. And you know what? Yeah. You're right. You do bounce around because one minute you'll be you'll be on the bed with the, with the camera in front of your face. And next thing you know, you'll be in the car talking about, y'all just got their doing it over. And let me tell you yeah, about exactly. what this nigga did. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, I don't have a, you know, I started my YouTube channel because I just wanted to have fun. You know, I was not considering it a business. I right. just wanted to get on YouTube, have a good time talk to some people, meet some new people. And it was fun initially. You know, I've been on it for eight years. I know. You're a G. <laughs> you are my sensei. But, but people, I mean, people just got different with time, especially black people. Now, you know? I think, I think yeah. what it boils down to is people overall are fickle. You know, one minute they'll find something that really interests them, and they'll, and they'll ride that wave until the wave starts to die down. And then they'll jump to another wave, and then and that starts to die down. Unfortunately, as creators... That is a phenomenon we have to, we always have to deal with, you know. Even though I only got so many subscribers, I'm still a, a content creator, and I I try to make sure that my stuff is on point. But I may have one video that has maybe three or four hundred views, which for me is actually phenomenal, and another one only has like two. Exactly. And well, it's so the same for all of us. We're all like that. <laughs> so I look back and go, hmm. Did I did I pick my nose in the video? Um, did I do something? Stupid? I mean, uh, unless you are like one of those uh, YouTube creators who have over a hundred thousand subscribers, mm -hmm. and then you uh, like you said something about Markiplier earlier. The reason why Markiplier is so popular to begin with is because he's a gamer, and YouTube started off as like this gaming site, you know. Right. So, and plus he's not African American, you know. It's it's rare that you meet. Uh, African Americans who have that many subscribers, with the exception of like Lovely T. I don't even think Lovely T and, and Phil have subscribers that high. Like how many how many millions does Markiplier have? You know, like the black people are in the hundred thousands. They're not millions. Like name yeah. one black YouTuber that's millions of um, 
subscribers? African American? I can't. African American. I can't. I can't, right? You can't. It, even though some of us have been on there just as long as Markiplier, or maybe some of us have, you know, the same type of good content or whatever, it's still, we never get as many. So I think for a long time, black people weren't watching YouTube. I remember when I, when I was first on, I was promoting. Black people weren't really watching it like that. My audience is predominantly white. Shoot, black people are barely watching TV. Like there's there's one YouTuber that I watch. There's a group of guys called RDC uh, World, and just a bunch of neighborhood kids. But they put this stuff together about anime and gaming, and they they're down to earth. And I and I like what they do. And I look at their subscribers. And, okay, they don't have a lot, but they're loyal. It's like okay, but yeah. you're right. They have their thing. So. If you bounce around, which is what I'm trying not to do, I'm trying to stay in within the fold of what I know how to do, then perhaps that'll work out for me. And it will. You gotta just because you gotta build a community. Usually, when you build a community, that community is about one damn thing. Like with Tommy, his community is basically black men who bash black women. It's just uh, built. It's just one of those. Oh God! You know, Hold on. Uh, did you just drop in your mouth? Uh, you, you said his name. Uh. Okay. <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, never want to punch a nigga in the face so bad. Oh my god! But let me tell you something. Most of the men who come on and talk how he does, they also get very popular very quick because the community is already built for them. You know, black men who behave or have the same viewpoints as he does, they tend to get very popular on YouTube fast as well. Like if they're bashing black women or single mothers or something like that. Because the audience is already built, you know. I can't do it. I can't do it. And, and I, can, like, I, I, I don't even like talking negatively about black men often on my channel. Like, <laughs> I, I like how you, you added that in. I like how you added that. I don't like talking about black men often. Okay. Yeah, I don't like to negatively talk about them. Like, even though I've had my negative experiences, I'll talk about my experience. But I don't like to group them in and generalize them. And I've done that in the past, and I don't like. I don't like it. I don't, don't want to do that. But I'm the type of person, I can't figure out what it is that I want to do. I know how to do so many things. And my life changes so much that I don't know what I want my YouTube channel to be about. Well, I know, like you said, you are the Jane of all trades. I've seen you do videos on just about everything. You've literally covered the gambit. How-tos, relationships, comedy, you name it. Cooking tutorials. Yeah, yeah, wait, what? Okay, I need to go back a little bit. Is you cooking? Yo, I got to see yeah, this. Yeah, I have cooking tutorials. I have cooking tutorials. I have makeup tutorials, beauty tutorials, hair tutorials. I have done everything because that's my life. Like, I just know how to do so many things. Well, what about tutorial tutorials? Okay. How about that? I know about how. I have done that. I have a computer... Okay, see, this, this is the reason why you cannot have black folks on right on phones in cars and dead zones. You see this? On technology, I just, I just went through a dead zone. Like I was saying, this is why you cannot have black folk on phones in dead zones because they all start sounding like Robocop after a while. <laughs> yeah, that's how you were sound initially. Like you were sound, I was like, why does he sound like that? I feel like that. I feel yeah, like that. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. I'm sitting there like, wait a minute. Did I go through a dead zone? Wait, I'm at home. How the hell am I going to do that? And you're like, erm, 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 gang, gang. Exactly. That's totally me. Yeah. 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 Yeah
and look at that beautiful face, child. Look at the look at the complex and everything. If you're watching this, I'm here to tell you this is the one of the most adorable people I have ever met. I mean, she is like she's like the size of a teddy bear, and I, I'm here to tell you, it's like you want to shake her hand and put her on the shoulder and say, "Come on, let's go to Toys R Us." Yay! Like, oh, she's so you know what's adorable. funny? People think I'm like huge. I'm not even big. I know. Like, I'm so tiny. People are like, she's BBW, she's fat. I'm so small. Like, it's not even funny. I don't even know why people think that. I think that was just a rumor that was started. Oh my God, it's traffic. Uh, You're like a Polly Pocket, only with uh, good hair. You know, about like that big. <laughs> Polly my friend, Pocket. My friend's a Polly Pocket. Watch. Hey, girl. Hey. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I was thinking about that movie guy. We had fun at Ochama's. I know that um, waitress was like, these two are crazy. She was trying her that little to figure it out, and she couldn't. <laughs> That's fine. That weird-ass uh, Irish accent you had. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, why is it thinking like that? Yo, I used that in a drive through about three days ago. I was coming off of work. I'm in the drive-thru and I said, I don't feel like talking American today. So what will it be? And it's like I had a dial in my head of the different accents. I've used British. I've used Punjabi. Ooh, I haven't used Scottish in a while. So I said, okay. Got it. That's it. Got it. So, so she's hearing me. She's like, hi, welcome to Burger King. Can I help you? Yes, Lasse. I'm very hungry. Can you help me out? <laughs> what did she do? Beg, beg your pardon, sir. I'd like to place my order if you don't mind. I'm a wee bit hungry. <laughs> that now, the is so thing funny. Is, you can hear people in the background laughing because she starts laughing. She's like, I'll take your order. And I told her what I wanted. And she said, okay, the cost is like, it was like $7.58. I said, what is that in euros? I don't have American dollars. <laughs> it was What's a long time. Huh? What's she say over there? She said, please come to the window and she can hear her laugh. Now, now, the funny thing is, I pull up and you see my face just like this. <laughs> she said, did you order? I said, I'm out of fuck, I did. <laughs> that is too funny. I don't know what I would do if I was working at a drive thru with somebody did that. The funny thing I, is, I can only imagine that that type of job is not as bad as people think. It can't be. Oh, what do you mean it can't? Okay. <laughs> Let me tell you, working at a game store, you get every walk of life coming up in there. And um, and a couple of the guys who play Yu-Gi-Oh are managers at McDonald's. And they have told me some horror stories. I literally saw my hair fall out of my head, land on my lap, <laughs> and cry. Because they had a kid come in. He got hired. He was ready to rock and roll the first day. He was doing all. Oh, I mean, you can see him just cleaning and behind the register and learning everything. And they said the next day he came in and put down his uniform and he says, I am too good for this job. I quit. He put it on the counter and walked out. And I mean, is that bad? Like, what? How is it that bad? To me, it all depends on, it all depends on the leadership and the staff. That's what it all boils down to. It all depends. And some people... They have one concept of what the job is going to be, but when they're actually behind the counter, realize it's not. Some people don't have the resolve to stay there and try and make it, you know, make it better, make it work. They were like, you know what? I don't care. It's a throwaway concept. Okay, it didn't work for me. I quit. I'm gonna go to somewhere else. Same mindset going into a different place. If you're expecting them to rain gold on your head while you come in the door, like you are the greatest thing to walk into whatever restaurant or Walmart or whatever. You're sadly mistaken because there are four thousand other people just like you that want to work. So you are now disposable, and they don't seem to get that in their mind. Well, here's the thing: it depends on the place that I'm at. Because every time I go to Chick Fil A, I don't care where I am in the country. When I go to Chick Fil A, everybody is happy. Like, yeah. why? <laughs> I'm serious. It's like their entire staff is pleasant. I have yet to meet someone at 
Chick-fil-A who was rude. But if I go to McDonald's or something like that, these people would be nasty. Like you or said. Wendy's. Well, it's like you said, it all depends on who's running it. Okay, Wendy's and McDonald's have been around for a while. But Chick-fil-A knew that they had to change the way they, they run things. I mean, you think about it. No, you're not it. listening. You're not listening. When I was in high school, there was such thing as Chick-fil-A. They had a Chick-fil-A in Annapolis, Maryland. And we'd go to that Chick-fil-A, and they was pleasant then, too. Okay. And we'd be like, it's so nice. Like, why is it so nice? And it's, it's, I'm telling you, it doesn't matter where I am in the country. So when you say leadership, you mean like the manager of the Chick-fil-A? Okay. Again, <laughs> like, I'm going to tell you like you told me. You ain't listening. Chick-fil-A has not been around as long as Wendy's and McDonald's. So over the years, a lot of the stuff that they do, they've transitioned. The company, the people that brought up Chick-fil-A, they saw that. They literally saw how they structured everything and decided to go in the opposite direction. They know how to take care of their, their employees. They offer bonuses. They literally would do awards on the spot. They offer them a, a guaranteed day off because they're not open Sunday. For a lot of people... Right. That is definitely something to bring them in. Now, the management, um, and since it's pretty much a it's a uh, it's a faith based uh, business, most of them come right. in with with a, a better outlook on things, and they know they're bringing young folks in. So they're not going to just start throwing the bullwhip at them, saying, you know, hey, you need to do this. And I even have kids who work at Chick Fil A who come into the store and I say, well, how's the job, man? I love it. A couple of days ago, I helped this lady with her order. Manager came up. Told me I was going to be put in for an award. Boom. Two days later, he got an award. He got a bonus. And he was just a guy behind the counter. You don't see that at a Wendy's or a McDonald's or even a Taco Bell. Well, Taco Bell's That's trying. True. That's true. But it's I, I have been on forever. They all, <laughs> it's, it's always looking at the structure. And, and the companies that are doing better for their employees, they look at the, the trials the failures and the successes, and they look at how they can change things and they go, okay, I'm not going to do it like this. Another example is cookout. You know about cookout, right? Yeah, I've never been there either. Cookout does the exact same thing that Chick-fil-A does. They're open okay. on Sunday, but they offer a specific day off or days off for their full time, and they guarantee benefits for their part time. They make it so that coming in there, you enjoy what you do. It may not always be perfect. But at least you don't go home grumbling with the potential of, you know what, I hate my job, I quit. Okay. And that's where it goes. Offer incentive to the employees, you'll have happier employees. Don't sit here and say, well, yeah, you can go work anywhere you want, I don't care, just, just go. Yeah. And it all depends who runs the McDonald's or the Wendy's because they're franchised. But Chick-fil-A is a little more stringent about it. This is a this is a company business. You can do this, but you got to adhere to this. If you don't, we'll shut you down. And I've seen Chick-fil-A shut down and reopen because the management got moved out and brought someone else in. So it's, um, that's a franchise too. It's a franchise Chick-fil-A. Oh, too, well, right? yeah, but they're a little more, yeah, strict, but they're strange. I don't know anybody who owns it. I don't know anybody who owns one. I don't either. Yeah. Maybe they take the yeah, day off on Sundays like everybody else. <laughs> they being real secretive about who owns their damn Chick Fil A. For real. I, I think, yeah, I think I would. I think I would invest in the Chick Fil A. To be honest, I would too, because I see how happy my kids are when they come in there. So you know what? I like a business that would take <laughs> care of its employees. I do. Oh, on another note, your boy is guaranteed to go to San Diego Comic Con. I'm waiting for my code to get my badge. I am too hyped for this. Comic Con in San Diego. How long are you gonna be there? A week? Yeah, um, from Monday to Monday. So yeah, I'll be there a couple days before because I'm trying to go up north for about a day to go see my daughter before I come back down mm -hmm. and go to work. You know how I say I'm going to work. I wish my work was Comic-Con. Well, it's not like you couldn't put in a press pass, but I know you're busy. I could. Things going on. No, no, no. I could do a press pass, but it, here's my thing. With Block 11, right, it's, it's so much I got to do in order for me to get to a point where I'm able to travel like that. 
True. To be able to, you know, have enough money to pay for my photographers to come, you know, or what, or maybe my liaison to come with me. I mean, even in Atlanta, when we, we come to events, they they become expensive. You know what I mean? Because right. I'll be having to feed them, provide them with food, you know, give them VIP tickets. And usually we get it anything free anyway. Everything. I mean, a festival, anything. Well, we hey, so, so are you going to press past Dragon Con? I think I probably will. I got to know the exact date. It's Labor Day week. You'll be there, right? Are you going to come this time? This time? I was I was there last time. I know. That I'm saying, are you going to come this time and look? Are you black and beautiful? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Shut your ass we up. Know. Oh, my gosh. Anyway. Yeah, I'll be yeah, there. I'll Labor be there, Day. and I'm actually, I'm actually debuting a brand new costume I'm working on. I'm not going to give any details. <laughs> that joke is going to be... Is that September 5th? Huh? What is that? Labor Day. When is that? September is it? Uh, let me look at my handy-dandy Google Calendar here that is attached to my blah, blah, yaggity, schmaggity. Hold on. That is the 31st. August 31st to August 31st. Uh, September 4th. Yeah, Dominique should be back by then. She starts school again. She's in um, D.C. right now, and then she's going to San Francisco with my mother. So she'll be back in, in Atlanta uh, August 7th, I think. And, then, you know, she likes stuff like that. Well, heck yeah. I, t I told you. If you... Last year, I told you if you wanted me to help you let you, you know get in, I I would have gotten a badge for you and uh for Dom without a problem. Man, this year she might come in Satan. Yeah, she had to think about Satan for some reason. She, you know, you know, you ever heard the um that rumor about the Pope saying that Satan is God? Yeah, I heard it. Yeah, you know, she might have to think about that because you know her and her mother. Wow. And people who worship the devil. She's oh. not doing it, but she's just like Satan isn't as Lucifer isn't as bad as people make him out to be. It's always never clinged on to religion, and I don't know if that has to do with how she is intellectually. Because you know, a lot of intellects be like, hey. you know. So I thought maybe that was why, because you know. When you have an independent mind, you don't necessarily cling on to organized religion. That's true. So, but that's like you, you are intellect. Are you Christian? Yes. You're Christian. Yes. So, you, you don't you don't ever like question. Nope, because <laughs> it's for me. It's it's about faith. I uh -huh. believe I believed in God since I was actually able to understand who He was. And from there, it's never been a doubt. And it's, and it's weird to try to explain it to somebody. It says sometimes we all want something or someone to believe in. And as right. far as I'm concerned, he has proven time in and time again that he exists in my world and in my life. So, you know, I'm not going to be dumb enough to get into a debate with somebody about it because I know and I understand that everybody believes in different things. So for me, it's, it's it's not about what's written more so than what I've experienced. But I think that's that's how it is with me. I mean, I used to be a minister, so I was a Christian for a very long time. And, you know, now I'm Buddhist. But I don't, um, I follow Buddhism because of my experiences with Christianity and my experiences with other religions. And when I went to college, I just learned so much about so many different religions and the wars and violence and things that came with it in the name of these religions. And I was like, everybody's just arguing and fighting, and I don't think God is about that. It's that deep. So I was like, well, let me find out, you know, what would fit me best. Because Christianity always made me feel like I was fighting for something or I was striving for something I would never be. You right. know, like if I tried to follow all of the things, like if you try to follow everything in the Bible to a T, you think you could do that? No. 
I couldn't. You couldn't. Yeah, like it's like so. I mean, how how can a person actually be that? Any of that stuff. Even when I look at like the Ten Commandments. Have you followed the Ten Commandments? <laughs> Have you covered it some neighbor's wife? <laughs> I don't want to cover nobody's wife. They ain't good looking. I don't even want to do it. I ain't gonna cover nobody's wife. But I will say this: but the, where a lot of people get confused is the difference between religion and faith. Now, faith is what you believe in, regardless to what it is. If it's, if it's you know Buddha, Allah, God, Yahweh, okay, hey, whatever. But when you look at it from a religious standpoint, religion is a concept that was created by man and it's based on doctrine that's written by man. So you have all of these aspects of Christianity, but you got Lutheran, Methodist, Episcopalian, Apostolic, uh, Presbyterian, uh, AME, CME, Church of Christ, Church of God in Christ. I mean, Oh, my God. The list goes on and on and on. It does. And now, granted, they're all based on the Bible, but they're different outlooks on the Bible itself. Now, granted, I was raised as a Baptist, and in my mind, if I had to put a title on it, yes, I am a Baptist. But I am a child of God. I believe in God, not, like I said, not not primarily because what is written, because to me that is truth, but from what I've seen in my life. And I've seen I've seen a lot of crazy things. But it's because of him that I am where I am right now, and I am alive. My kids are good. My, my my mom is good. Everybody in my life is good. I've had my problems. I've prayed. Solutions have come up. I go forth, and I just try to represent. You know, I don't sit there on the corner. You know, like um, what was it? Like the one church? God hates fags. God, hates. how do you know <laughs> what guy? Hates? God hates fags. Man, them, them idiots come to San Diego for Comic Con. Man, we run over them like a herd of buffalo. <laughs> I don't know why people do that. They get on the street with their microphones, and they do that at five points down here in Atlanta, downtown. It's guys out there, and not just um Christian, but it'll be like Black Power people out there. Oh God! Talking about you know white supremacy and stuff like that, and I hate it. This white people be walking by looking like what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Because, see, here's my thing. There's a lot of racism in a lot of different places, but majority of white people aren't as racist as black people think. They're oh. just walking around trying to survive. Like, they're not thinking about, <coughs> you know, none of that. So, they're like, you know, I don't know if you heard, there's this mountain called Stone Mountain here in Georgia. And every day they do, like, this laser show, this, this the history of Atlanta and slavery and things like that. And when I try to invite black people to see this laser show, even if it's, it's, it's beautiful because it has like fireworks afterwards, but the, the show before it is like somewhat racist, okay? But when I ask somebody to go with me, they're like, I'm not going to that racist ass show. And I'm like, well, you can't really blame the new white people about what happened when the old white people were in charge. <laughs> I mean, the white people, I mean, the new white people are looking like, this is a racist-ass show. They're looking at it the same way. We're looking at it. But that's not why they co they're coming to the laser show. They're coming to fellowship because it's like a big lawn, and everybody comes and brings their lawn chairs and picnics and the kids playing around and blowing bubbles and shit and it's just a, a good experience and so you know black people miss out on good experiences when they think white people all over are being racist and so when i see like preachers talking about white supremacy on the side of the street and all this stuff it's just as bad as those preachers that say you know god doesn't like fags it's like equivalent to me for the i don't like to see it i know but yeah i'm at um c hall I really enjoyed this hangout. I know we, we were supposed to do this a long time ago. Yeah, next time we do one, you're going to keep your ass at home. So that way I ain't seeing you look like, look like puzzle pieces. It wasn't that bad because you hear me the whole time? Yeah, until you sound like Robocop. It was like, um, 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 um. And that's what she said to me. Wait, I didn't hear a damn thing. You didn't hear that? Let me say it again. 
<laughs> you silly. <laughs> um, I have to find a place to park, so I have to call my dude, try to figure out where I'm parking his car. But we can schedule one again. Make sure you send me the link, okay? Yes, dear. I right. learned right the second time, okay? I, I just want to make you proud of me. I did it. Yay. <laughs> Yay. To, to put in, you know, our hangout that we talk in all the time? Can mm-hmm. you put your um your channel link in there so I can look at it when I'm on my way back to the house? You mean you mean this atrocity that we just created? <laughs> no, I mean it's the channel in general because you asked me the other day had I been watching and I told you I've been I haven't been on YouTube. Oh, so put, your, okay. put your channel your channel link in you know in our chat thing. I I will okay. since uh since you slacking okay I call you my sense. Yeah, I'm I'm, mm. I'm over here tripping. All right, I'll talk yeah. to you soon. Okay, thanks for having me on. Thank you for having me, girl. I appreciate you. <laughs> All right, bye. Bye. <laughs>